Welcome back to Copic in the Craft Room. It's Michelle Houghton here, and I am working with some Stamping Bella stamps today. I'm actually going to start from the very start of this process. I've got two stamp sets, and I'm going to be building a scene. Um, I have I don't always do this portion um, showing you kind of my process of building up these scenes. So if you've seen this before, you can kind of fast forward up to the coloring. If you have not, you can take a look. I've laid out my stamps on the Tim Holtz um, stamping a kind of assistant thing here and I am I've spaced them out how I want them and I'm thinking about what things are going to be to the front of the scene kind of on top of other layers so I've got my snowman and a few snowflakes and I decide since I've got it set up and I'm going to do um, multiples I'm going to go ahead and stamp this portion on several sheets of paper so it's going to speed up here in a second and you're going to see what's going to happen it'll um we'll just go into fast forward mode i'm going to do several of these and this is the first layer so this is going to be what's most forward in the scene and all that means it's it's what's closest to the viewer now i am not a good stamper so even with one of these um stamping assistants i whether it's a misty or the tim holtz or any of them I still seem to mess up and end up with ink blobs everywhere but you'll see me do several repeats of this I have a few that have little marks on them extra ink marks but most of them are going to come out pretty clean little reminder there for to stop by my blog scrapweaver.com the best part of these little stamping guys is that you can re-stamp something if it doesn't get dark enough I've done that on a couple of these so far but I'm going to do a total of eight of these little cards and then I've pulled out a sticky note and I am stamping that snowman in particular. I'm not real concerned about the snowflakes, but I'm going to stamp the snowman onto that sticky card. Just a post-it note. For me, those are about the easiest thing to use because it's got a little bit of adhesive on it already and I can use that as a mask. So I'm going to clean up this group of stamps and tuck them away back into the package. And then I'm going to set up my scene. I'm going to use one of the ones that had a little bit of an inking issue since if this one doesn't work out as well, it's not a big deal. Then I'm going to trim around this little snowman, just kind of around the bottom because I know that's the portion where I'm going to layer another stamp. So one of the things I try to make sure when I'm doing some fussy cutting like this is my scissors are always pointed away from me. And then I am using my less dominant hand, my left hand, to kind of turn the paper into the scissors and kind of keep cutting as I go. That little extra helpful tip for you there. Then I'm going to stick this and see because it has the adhesive along the top. I really only need at the bottom because that's where my stamps are going to overlap. And I'm going to make this guy sitting on a sled. I'm also going to give him a friend sitting next to him, a small raccoon. And this is coming from a second Stamping Bella set. These sets are kind of cool because you can buy them in small groups or you can buy them in a really big group. And I bought a couple of the small groups because I didn't know that I needed all of them. So this layer has two stamps to it. It has a little girl who I'm going to have pulling the sled. And I have a little friend raccoon who is sitting next to the snowman on the sled. So I just go through the process. I reuse my post-it note on all of these cards. And then the raccoon, where it overlaps, you can end up seeing kind of a black blob on the post-it note. That's where his little hand and his pom-pom from his hat go. Now I'm going to use post-it notes again for the raccoon and the little girl. And what I realized pretty quick after I've done this is I really don't need the little girl. She's not overlapping anything. So I really just need the little snowman and the raccoon. So I put both post-it notes and stamp the sled. And now I have to go through all eight cards again. Post-it notes, ink up, stamp, post-it notes, ink up, stamp, post-it notes, ink up, stamp you can see how this works. It's really easy and actually fairly quick, obviously not this quick, but you get the picture. Now I've got these eight cards that are ready to color. So now we're gonna get into the coloring. For the little girl, I've got her skin going. I've got an R000 and an R01. 
Then I'm doing a little tip to tip with R32. Her hair is going to be based in E43. Then I'm going to do some flicks with E44 right up on the tip of that brush and then E47 to darken that up. Back to E44 just to soften. Then B32 is going on her muff and or her scarf, sorry, and her mittens and her ear muffs and then some curly swirlies on both the scarf and the earmuffs to kind of show that knit and fuzz. A little B37 to darken up all three of those areas even further. And then I'm gonna jump all the way back to B32 to soften those. I don't necessarily need them totally smooth because I assume they're kind of a knit material and so they aren't smooth and shiny. So going over to the snowman and adding the same group of colors, got the B32 down, B34 next, and the B37 just for those deepest shadows, softening up with a little B32. Again, I do want it to look kind of knobby. I guess that's the best word I can think of. Um, W7 on her headband, and then I'm going to a W1 and a W7, and a little tiny bit of colorless splendor on her little boots. I've got an R32 to base her coat and an R35 to add that first layer of shading and then an R37 for the darkest shadows. This is a natural blending group on most of these areas. Notice on a lot of the reds, I don't go all the way to the edge until the very end. Same group on the hat band and the scarf over on this other side. And then I decide the little guys, the little raccoons hat can be that red as well. So same three colors. Then I've got a W1. Then I'm going to do some of the pom-pom. I've got the arms of the snowman. I've got the hat is basing and I've moved on to W3 and W5. Getting darker. W7 goes all the way into the darkest areas. Hopefully that hat's starting to look like a cylinder. Added those details to the raccoon. R32 and R01 are actually going to be on the nose for the carrot. Darkening up, giving a little bit of shape to that snowman with a BV20. This is one of my favorite snow colors, especially because when I add that colorless blender, it adds those hints of blue, which I think just work perfectly, kind of show that reflective surface. So then I've got that E43 again, and I'm bringing that in on the sled adding some texture with the E44. And I kind of realized partway through that I've mixed up what the little arm and the scarf is on the um, raccoon. So I get that fixed up. Got some W1 on the sled skis and uh, rails. And I added that BV20 onto the snow hill and the tracks of the sled. Going to add a little more, and I'm using that colorless blender to really soften that up and pull that out. And then I've got a ton of sky, a big open sky. It's hard to break into sections. So I'm going to start with my um, colorless blender first and then go in with my B000. Now I am using the chisel nib, it goes a lot faster, and I'm going back and forth in between my colorless blender, and I'm actually basing the entire area with that. It's kind of like putting a primer down or water for watercolor painting. It's going to help that color spread and go even, especially with a big surface like this. It can lighten that color a little bit, but it also helps get it smooth. So here's my little card. I've got eight of them that I can color up just like that, and I will do that on a later time. You guys certainly don't need to watch me doing that but I can put this together for a little postcard. That's what I was thinking as I put it together with some pattern paper and make it more like a little postcard that I could send out as thank you cards. Um, I can still slip them in an envelope if I like, but that's what I've got. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you have um, a chance to stop by the Copic in the Craft Room on Facebook and also my blog, scrapweaver.com, to see all of the Copic upcoming events. Thanks for joining me. Have a happy, colorful week.